Hey, what's up, Brandon here, and you are back for part two of how to get these Facebook profiles and really start bringing in these leads uh, and start making these sales and start to attract a following that's really gonna be dedicated to your vision and to your purpose. And you know and I know that when you can attract those kind of people inside of your business, you're gonna have long-term sustainability, which is gonna help you be able to really get to your dreams a lot faster. So what we covered in our first part was, you know, uh, a little bit of the basics and uh, kind of went over a little bit about, you know, the 221 method, about what to say inside our bio. We went over a little bit about the header. Well, actually, we went into detail about the header, about how to have that profile picture, really have something about you that's going to, you know, let people see, uh, you know, a side of you that, that you want them to see, you know, whether it's smiling, whether it's a little bit serious, doesn't really matter, but habit of you where it's a clean shot of you, uh, having that there is really important. Um, also being able to, uh, you know, correctly be able to speak to your market. So we wanted to touch a little bit today on how to identify your market and how do you get to those people. And the best way that we can do that is by uh, getting to figure out who it is that our market is and that, that can be done through a couple of questions. And so we wanna be able to go through those questions right now. And if we were to think about who it is that we were looking to attract, you know, as far as our business is concerned, we're looking to attract, you know, business owners, people who are entrepreneurs looking with their startups, their inventions, or people who are just looking to scale up. Uh, you know, anybody from internet marketing all the way up to, you know, doctors and lawyers and anybody in between. And, you know, those kinds of, that, that kind of vast majority of, of people, that, that wide net that we're looking to cast, uh, we have to basically go off of our principles that we would like to use to attract those people to our business and then use the content that we're creating to help get them to lower their guard and ask about what it is that we do. So we take a different approach than some people. Some folks use their personal page to actually push their product and push their business, which I, I really don't see the purpose in. Um, I believe that it's best to be able to you know share some results that you're getting. That's obviously, well, uh, people need to be celebrated. But I also think that it gets to a point where people just push it and they push it out of line. And so when it comes down to you having to uh, you know decide on how you want to create the content for your page, I believe that it's to do just very, you know, jab, 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 right hookish. You know, you want to be able to give them enough uh, content and give them enough value to where you've earned the right to be able to ask for the sale. And that's what a lot of people, they forget to do. And so the reason why you're watching this is to learn how to really develop that relationship with these people. And I want to be able to make sure that by the time you leave this Facebook course, these lessons that you will know and have a set up profile and you'll have all the artillery that you can, you know, walk through these conversations with confidence that you're going to be able to set up meetings and be able to create these sales and generate them uh, however it is that you choose, right? So if we wanted to move on to the next part, knowing what we know now about the header, the profile image, the 221 method inside of the bio, what do we want to focus on next? Well, next we want to make sure that we have consistency in line. We want to make sure that we have our scheduling patterns in, you know, in place. We want to make sure that we know exactly what we're talking to and who we're talking to. And we also want to make sure that, um, that we're calling people out inside of these posts. So we're going to cover all that right now. Uh, so make sure that you do have your notes in hand and you're going through the process of, of taking um, advantage of all this because by the end of this, you're going to see exactly how you can start to really make money and set up your meetings uh, for free without any paid ads, right? And that's the whole goal of this is being able to mix all of that information so that you can have and be running on all cylinders. So what we have is uh, knowing your market. The perfect avatar exercise is something that you have inside of the PDFs of, the, of this uh uh, of this of this membership that you have access to. So if you just head over to the PDFs uh, member or area for members only, you're gonna see that you're gonna have avatar access to that perfect avatar uh, PDF. When you go through that PDF, you're gonna be able to see and identify and build, literally build your perfect customer from scratch, from the feet up. I'm talking what kind of shoes do they wear? What kind of music do they listen to? What's, what books do they read? Where do they live? What's their name? Uh, literally building this person from scratch and going through that exercise from top to bottom, you're, you're gonna get to see and know who your exact person is that you would like to target for your product. And what happens a lot of the time is we tend to go outside of the box from right out the gate. When we start our business, when we are looking to grow our, our social media influence, we tend to go and think about, okay, well, who who is it that you know I would I would want to attract, right? And you don't really think about who you would want to attract. You think about who your product would attract and who would really need your product. And there's a big difference in that. So you got to be able to identify with those people, and you got to think about, okay, well, if you have a say a, a a nutritional bar and you're looking to sell that, who is it that would be best for you inside of your market, right? Who would be the best for you? 
Well, we have to go through that. It's going to be athletes. It's going to be these. And I'm not saying forever. This is not like, okay, this is the person that's going to have uh, access to my stuff and only this person. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying to make it only like that. What I'm saying is that we want to be able to figure out where your best customer is. Where's your perfect customer? And identifying that that, that customer is going to help us identify a market. And when we identify that market, we could flood that market with your offer uh, and content, right? Not being all salesy and pitchy, but actually being able to you know fill it with content. And the next thing you know, we're going to be able to build your brand. You're going to be able to have that market know, like, and trust you. And you're going to have thousands of people that are going to be interested in buying more from you down the line. And then when we get that market kind of filtered to to come to you and get them to see, okay, well, this is the person in this play space, then we can go on to another market, meaning that now maybe we want to go into another demographic, another occupation, another group of people. Uh, the whole reason and think thought process behind what you're doing in your business is to create a brand that's going to be able to attract people to buy from you. So there's not just one group of people that want to purchase your product, but there is one person in each market that is all the same. And so when we can identify that person inside of that market, we could just speak to that one person then there's a million of those people. So it's gonna get attention from a lot of people, but we don't wanna speak to a lot of people. If that makes any sense, we wanna speak to one person. So when you go through that perfect avatar exercise, you're gonna see that you've built one person from scratch, and then we could use that information that you've built, right, based off the data that you've already collected from your market, and if you haven't collected any data, then this is where we will start. Let's just go off, and you're gonna have to guess, okay, and that's where a majority of this is gonna have to take place at first. You're gonna guess, you might miss, you might hit the bullseye. Uh, it's not going to require that to be right at this moment. What matters is that you take the action. So if you have the data, that's perfect. We can use it to build your perfect avatar and figure out where it is that the most money is being spent or allocated and where it is that we can put most of our energy to get the biggest ROI. That can be done and that's, that, that's, that's the you know, quote unquote easy part. Uh, the, the, for all of you um, other ones out there that don't have that information, then you're going to want to start right now and just take a guess. Okay, is it 25 to 45 year olds? Um, you know, is it 50 year old males? Like I said, you're going to want to get as specific as possible, and then we're going to we'll create an age range around that. But when you go through your perfect avatar exercise, you're going to see a specific age, and you want to choose that age. So if you say 50 year olds, okay, we'll know to go up about five and down about five as well. So we'll create an age range instead of just having that one age group when we go into the targeting process of your offer. But for right now, make sure to build it out from scratch. Have fun with it. Make sure to give it a name. Give this person a name, guy, girl, or whatever. Uh, figure out if they got kids. Do they love the kids? Do they not like the kids? Are they happily married? Are they unhappily married? Uh, you know, are they bachelors? Uh, you know, think about this as you would like them to be, but think about your product, okay? Uh, don't just go out there and build somebody from scratch and think that, oh, well, this person would never buy my product. That defeats the purpose. We want to be able to have you go out there, build this guy from scratch, uh, and then knowing in the, in the long run, right, that this is going to be your perfect customer. And if we can promote to your perfect customer, we're going to win a lot of the time. So think about that and get really narrow on that and get super clear. And like I said, that exercise is going to help you. And then when you know that, everything that we've been able to cover so far is going to make a ton of more sense. And everything that we're going to cover from this point on is going to make a lot more sense. So moving on to the next part of our uh, bios is uh, going into Canva and going, and we touched on a little bit in, in Google last time where we took this image and we were saying to, if you were in yoga, to go ahead and use this as your header with putting a little bit of text up here saying maybe your mission, maybe your company mission or your life's mission or something like that, uh, breaking it down that way. That would be a great way to do it. Another way to do it is to go into Canva, okay? So you can literally just, you know, uh, I'll show you how. You can just right click there, save image as, and now I have that image saved, and now I will go to Canva, and I will bring this up just as well as, you know, it's very simple to use, easy to navigate through, it's free. Um, the only thing that costs is if you want the feature to resize things, which is called magic resize, which I think is an amazing feature and totally worth it because your feature, your images can actually get resized for, uh, for all of these sites in one little click, which I think is so well worth the time it takes to do it yourself. Um, but let's say that I wanted to go and make this a post. So I would go to say Facebook post. I always use to do Instagram posts because it's bigger than those and it, it formats it perfectly. Plus it allows you to use it for Instagram as well. So here you can go to Instagram post and then you would just go to your grids. And this is just a quick way to do it. You come here and make sure that grids up there. Now it just forms that picture there. Then you go to uploads and you can go to upload your image. 
Okay, and once that image gets uploaded, <clears throat> then we can go ahead and take it and click and drag it right over to the grid. Uh, very easy to do, and now we can start to really add any text to it. This is good for your Instagram post. Now let's say that you wanted to go ahead and do your Facebook headers, right? Well, that's gonna allow you to do the same thing. You're gonna just go over to your uh, main Canva dashboard, and you're gonna choose Facebook cover as your size. It's gonna bring you to this, and you're gonna wanna just make sure that you have your grid, and then your photo. And that photo will be automatically sized. And now you can go ahead and choose from your variety of text to make it pop and make it do what you want to do. So now you can, you know, add that on there and you know make it a little bit transparent. So you know maybe you want to do that. And then you can, you know, of course add the colors. Now we can, you know, really make what we want to make out of this. And you know, you can put your own little uh, you know, side uh, calling your, um, you know, your business logo. You could put something up here as a watermark. You could do all these things to make it your own and make your business stand out. And now you have something that's going to let people know by the image. Okay, the illustration of the image is going to say, hey, "Look, this is what I'm about. I love yoga." You know, using the same example, or I love business. Whatever it is that you love and that you're looking to accomplish through your page. Some people they want to accomplish brand awareness. Some people they want to accomplish making sales. Some people they want to accomplish. Uh, uh, generating leads. There's no wrong thing that there's no wrong answer. It's just what are we focusing on right now? And of course, that focus will shift as you go through the growth of your business and as you decide where we're going to be paying more attention to. But as we do, as we basically birth this whole thing from from uh, you know conception, we want to be able to say that okay, now we have our image, we have our wording. We have our marketing, right? We know exactly who our target market is because we went through the perfect avatar exercise. And now we uh, have our two to one method. We know exactly what it's gonna take to, to, to get a, and attract these people. And now we want to, like I said, go with the consistency. And these consistency is gonna be basically the amount that you post, what kind of content that you post, and how to make it all basically come to life. So if you look at what we've just done in Canva, you can make pictures rather easy. Uh, you would just go to the sizing that you would want. Uh, and then you would come in here and you could go to, uh, you know, uh, you know, Instagram. And now you have your Instagram post putting a text. Uh, if you don't want to use one of theirs, then you would just put one of those up there. And next thing you know, you can go and find a quote. You could find like inspirational, you know, inspirational quotes and come here. And now next thing you know, you've got... Oh, there we go. You have an inspirational quote. And, oh, there you go. And then, of course, you can, you know, make it look as pretty as you would like. And then, you know, make it you know, do that. Then you got something like that. And you can even do it to where it's bigger than that. Now if we're gonna center it, make it even bigger, do something like that. Ooh. And as you can see in, in, in just a few seconds, and I am not a designer, believe me, I am not a designer, but in just a few seconds, we can now have this. And now to even do something better, if you wanted to see something even really cool, you could do the layouts. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you would go to uh, elements and you would go to shapes. And believe me, this is not a class on Canva, but this is a easy way for you to get your, let me go to transparency. So I'm just putting a layered block, okay? A block over here in the top left, the first shape on top of an image. And then I'm gonna choose whatever shading color I would like, go to transparency, and now I can take it like that and push the back button so that the letters can be the things that I can control. And now center this and there we go. Now this is a little bit better, right? So now we can make this our own. And then you could put your, you know, like I said, you could put the name of the person who gave the quote here. You could put your name, you could put your business uh, logo right here. So like one thing that we always like to do so that if anybody shares it, uh, we just put Right like that, and then we could oh, put this right down there, make it smaller. So we want it really conspicuous. 
just enough to where people, if they saw it, they go, okay, well, this, this is where the video or the photo came from. And now you have a beautiful um, image that you made in less than, you know, what's that, less than three minutes? And now you can go ahead and just duplicate that in here, right, and duplicate that. And now you can just go ahead and either change the quote, put on another, uh, you know, put on another medium. Say you want to put this one on Google Plus or something and you want to change the, the quote, but you like the image. Go ahead and do that. That's totally fine. Put the same image. It doesn't really matter about that. What we want to do is get you to where you're saving time. So let's say that you want to syndicate this. I would come here and now I would just know that I can, you know, maybe change that out. Oh, maybe change that out. And now I can... Uh, you know, change the picture out, and let's say that I want to add now something that is about, let's say, meal planning, and go to images. Remember, go to search tools, go to size, you go to larger than two MPs, and this does not come up like I had thought it would. Thought I'd get some funny photos or something, but nothing here. But here is, here, here's something that, here's a nice image, right? So we have that. Let's go ahead and save that image. Saves automatically. Now let's come back here. And like I said, remember we go to uploads. You make sure to upload your image. Oh, and then you click and you drag it. Once you click and drag it, there you go. If you want to crop it, double click the image. And now you can move it around to get the portion of the photo that you want and then click the, oh, the checkbox, and there you go. Now it's cropped to that. And remember, like how we said, now you have everything that you need. Now you can go ahead and put some kind of text on there that is about healthy eating, and now you have your quote or your message for the day, or maybe you're getting ready to promote a webinar, or you're getting ready to promote a product, or you're getting ready to promote a launch, right? There's so many different things that you can do now. So uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on this, but now you can see how simple it could be to go into you know Canva, create some real simple use images, uh, display them on your Facebook page, and how to resize them for Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. It's really, like I said, you just come to right here, and you have them all there for you. Um, there's also the magic resize feature that if I hit magic resize, I can magic resize this to turn into literally anything that I want. And then if you press the magic resize, it will then turn it into a Twitter post for you where all you have to do is, as you can see, is just resize it a little bit and make sure, like so it gives you the dimensions I should say, but you do have to then make sure that, there we go there. And now that's ready for Twitter. Now if I wanted to, I can go ahead and save this as my Twitter post. So as you can see here, instead of having that as the quote, I would put Twitter posts. And then for me, I usually do them all in one week. So it'd be like Twitter posts. Um, so I started today, it'd be like May 4th, uh, 5-4 through 5-11. Oh, Twitter posts, 5-4 through 5-11. That's what I would do. And now when I save this, I know for a fact that everything inside this folder is gonna be four posts from 4.5 to 4.11 on Twitter. And I know everything from here is gonna be uh, the uh, Instagram. So this would be like, you know, uh, IG posts 4.5.4, and then so on and so forth for Pinterest and the other ones, okay? So that's what we would do there. And that basically covers everything um, just to give you a quick overview about the consistency uh, using tools that will allow you to automate these things are cool but you want to have that form of interaction with your as, as a human being okay so what that means is don't be putting out things on buffer all the time that you know require people to you know engage with you but you're not doing any engaging back uh, the way that Facebook works is it's since it's a social network is they want people to actually engage with each other. So if you're not doing any engaging on your part, they're not going to be showing your stuff to as much people as you would like them to. Um, I know that we all would like them to show more of our stuff. We would love that. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're making it such a user experience that if you don't find it in your, if you're not um, reciprocating on the actions, if you're not out there following people, if you're not out there commenting on things, if you're not out there liking things and, uh, you know, uh, messaging people, direct messaging people, that actually has a big play in how often your stuff gets seen and to whom it gets seen. 
So believe it or not, there are some things that you've got to do. If you want to utilize Facebook as your way to generate leads and you want to really drive it home like that, then you've got to know that you've got to be active on other people's pages as well. You cannot rely solely on automation. You can't sit there and say, I'm going to put up an Instagram photo and make it come over here and then say to people, well, why isn't anybody engaging with me on Facebook? Well, the reason is because you're never engaging with anybody else on Facebook. So you've got to make sure that all this comes together. You are a Facebook header your Facebook profile picture, your about me section in your bio, the way that you post your images, right? As we know, if you go to social media, if you go to Canva, you can create images or take the images over there and resize them to where they will fit Facebook. If you put up images that don't fit Facebook, you, it looks terrible. And what people want is an experience that's gonna be appealing to the eye, number one, educational, informative, entertaining. All these things have gotta take place on your page and it might seem like a lot, but when you get down with your niche and you understand, okay, well, like me personally, I know for a fact what my business wants to be about, but I also know that I wanna speak a lot more about my family here on my page for a few reasons. And the, the reasons are because my pe the people who interact with me engage more with when I have family posts there. So what did I learn? I learned that, okay, well, I've gotta be able to take stories and I've gotta be able to intertwine those stories into family experiences and those stories have gotta transition them into my business. It doesn't always have to be like that, but I love to do that because I know that if I just put up a business post uh, strictly about how I'm helping clients or results that my clients are getting or even results that I'm getting myself, typically people don't engage with that kind of content. It's not shareable. Um, and so what happens is the business owner, the typical business guy is going to be out there and they're going to think to themselves, well, that's what I want to do. I just want to promote results, promote results, promote results. When if you do that, uh, you're not going to be creating shareable content. And that's the whole goal of social media. It's not to just create content that's valuable. It's to create shareable content that's valuable. You want to be able to get it to where people can share this. So when you're going through your profile and your page, you want to give the you wanna give that clarity to that end user, to the person that's on your page. You wanna make sure that, okay, what am I here for? Am I here to purchase? Am I here to get educated and possibly entertained? Am I here to uh, basically just learn more about a product or an awareness? You know what I mean? So let's figure that out and go into a spot where we'll be able to give back to them more of what they want and that'll help them feel more comfortable doing what we want them to do. So, uh, make sure to go through this and so by now by the end of this video you should have had a, a, a perfect bio set up you should have your header your profile page your uh your consistency meaning that you want to be posting three times per day okay you want to be posting three times per day minimum um, if you're going to be using this as your main source again all of these tips and tricks are for if you're going to be using this as your main source of uh, meeting with people and collecting leads and doing things like that. But you want to be posting at least three times a day. Uh, hope, uh, preferably to have one video in there. Uh, having one video per day will actually reach out more to Facebook. They show videos more often to your feed. Uh, people tend to engage more with them. So having videos done each day will help you build that awareness and make more sales. So having those three posts per day uh, with your bio set up like this, uh, we'll go into further details with your business page and how to turn those into lead magnets as well. Um, but for right now, having your personal profile page set up to where it can attract more of your target market will help you phenomenally. It will help you um, just do things that not a lot of people are getting done because they go to their page and remember how it looked like those other ones. It looked like you know, you're showing... Uh, nothing about you or what you can do for them. There's no value being said. It's just like shared articles that have nothing to do with the actual uh, you know, market that you're facing. So just knowing exactly who your target market is and knowing exactly where we're gonna bring this information to and then uh, formatting this as basically like a magazine cover for them to come into and, and, and to be a part of as this community uh, is really gonna be helpful. So take this and run with it. Be able to, as soon as you get off this video, Make your profile pop. Go in there and get the video or the images done in Canva. Uh, come together with your message and your mission uh, and get everything to really be in sync with each other. Start to post three times per day minimum. And that's just minimum. If you want to get in there to you know, post out you know, 10 times a day, do it. You know, as long as you got value, as long as it's something entertaining, as long as it's something about your lifestyle, get out there and share it. People want to know about it. So I encourage you to, if you do not have that in your repertoire, to get that in there, right? Get comfortable sharing your lifestyle. It's gonna help you make more money on the long run. Uh, so yeah, so I'll see you on the next video. The next video, we're gonna be covering some more things uh, in depth about your business page when you go into the next Facebook video, uh, about your business page and setting up ads and doing all that kind of stuff. So I'll see you on the next one.